slip test. What is the purpose of find, uh, doing slip test to find XD and the XQ in which mode, which alternate, which machine in salient pole synchronous machine? Either alternator or motor. Okay, salient pole means poles will be projected like this thing. Poles will be projected. It won't be uniform. In this machine, we have to find the XD and the XQ. That is direct axis reactance and quadrature axis reactance. How to find this thing? Okay, the method to find this the method is called slip test. So okay, what we are having? This is the alternator. That is salient pole alternator. We are having this is stator and this is rotor this stator is given with three phase supply via an auto transformer okay via an auto transformer we are giving supply how much supply we are going to give means just 20 percentage of rated voltage suppose our alternate rating is 415 voltage means 415 what is 415 10 um, 20 percentage means 82 83 voltage 83 voltage only we are applying when we give apply 83 voltage to the stator. What will happen? Your rotating magnetic field will produce because even whenever your stator or star connector or delta connector is given with three phase supply, your rotating magnetic field will be produced. So in synchronous motor, what we will do? We will rot rotate this field to synchronous speed and we will ma do magnetic locking. That is the thing. That is, this is already this rotating and rotating magnetic field which is flux. But this we will interconnected okay that is magnetic locking will occur the thing is that here it is not like so here the thing is that here we are giving how much voltage we are applying just we are applying only 20 percentage of the rated voltage when we apply 20 percentage of the rated voltage rotating magnetic field will be produced its speed will be synchronous speed both will be k but the thing is that it magnitude the flux magnitude will be very less because the supply voltage is very less only 83 voltage that is 20 percent voltage only we are applying the voltage the flux generated will be the magnitude of the flux will be very less but it will be rotating magnetic field which is rotating at synchronous speed this here is shown here okay here okay what about the rotor normally the rotor is what is the purpose of rotor will give dc supply here we are not at all going to give dc supply if we, i won't give into dc supply it won't convert it into magnet that is an electromagnet okay but the thing is that by using a prime mover i am going to rotate this rotor by using what is the prime mover uh, for example turbine any turbine in a laboratory it will be shunt motor okay by just less than the synchronous bit we are going to rotate see so, okay now i will switch over to here okay here this is the stator okay stator it is rotating at what speed synchronous speed which is rotating physically it is not rotating this only rotating magnetic field is rotating but it magnitude will be very small which magnitude flux magnitude will be very small and the stator what is the stator sir this is rotor which is rotor it is not given with any dc supply so it is not an electromagnet but this is rotating at what speed it is rotating slightly less than the synchronous speed not synchronous speed slightly less than the synchronous speed how can we control by controlling the prime mover because this is controlled by the prime mover by controlling the prime mover i can adjust the field that is rotor to rotate slightly less than the synchronous speed or more than the synchronous speed no not necessary we will always rotate slightly less than the synchronous speed okay now what speed this rotating magnetic field is rotating ns what speed this rotor is rotating n whether where we have seen all those things this thing we have seen in where then the induction motor induction motor what we have seen rotor will rotate at uh, stator stator rotor will rotate at stator rotating magnetic field will rotate at synchronous speed ns and rotor will rotate at which speed n so what is the slip speed so what is the slip speed slip speed s equal to ns minus n okay okay due to this thing there is since there is a change in speed okay whether an emf will be induced in the rotor or not yes an emf will be induced another thing is that whether this coil is short circuited no in induction motor the secondary coil circuit will be short circuit the rotor coil will be short circuited so current will flow all things will happen here it is not short circuit open circuit only so an emf will be induced in this rotor okay here the thing is that this is rotating at synchronous speed this is rotating at less than synchronous speed n speed it is rotating there is a slip difference due to slip difference an emf will be induced here okay whether any in the what will have what the time what will happen means see whenever this this uh, air gap whenever the air gap see i am taking three phases are there r r dash y y dash b b dash three phases are there i am taking only one phase at a time i am taking only one phase at a time only i am taking r phase okay when the, whether this uh, rotor will cross this uh, rotating magnetic field yes this uh, rotating magnetic field because it is rotating faster than the rotor at, at, at freak not frequently because it is at one second how much uh, time it is one minute how much time it is rotating if it is a four pole machine it is 1500 times it is rotating if it is a supply frequency is 50 hertz so, so what will happen this will always cross this rotating magnetic field will cross the d axis and q axis this axis is called d axis this axis is called q axis okay it will always cross what it will always cross 
when it causes a flux of 5D is induced in this coil. A yeah, flux of 5D is induced. A yeah, flux of 5D is induced. When fly, for flux 5D induced, okay, automatically what will happen? That is when when it crosses the direct axis, when R phase, that is when the rotating magnetic field R R dash phase crosses the rotor, a yeah, flux of 5D is created. The flux will induce the, the, the offered and reactance XD. That reactance is called a uh, direct axis reactance. Similarly, when it causes the this R R dash, when it causes the quadrature axis, when it causes the quadrature axis, it induced an EMF is called quadrature axis flux. It's induced and flux is called quadrature axis flux. Okay. That will offer an uh, reactance which is called XQ. Okay. When XD is there, the current will be very low. Okay. When a current will bear this, the voltage will be high. Similarly, when, we, uh, when it causes the quadrature axis, the offer reactance is XQ. At the time, current will be more. At the same time, voltage will be less. Voltage will be less. So, what will happen? See, this is happening in one minute. How much time? Many times it will happen because this is slightly only this rotating at higher speed. This is rotating at NS. This is rotating at N speed. But any, even though it will cross the N R R dash, this rotor will cross the, uh, the, the sorry, this R R dash will cross the rotor. Frequently it will cross. So when it crosses, when it crosses the air gap without air gap, without air gap, that is when it crosses the direct axis, the voltage will be maximum and the current will be minimum. When it crosses the quadrature axis, the voltage will be minimum and the current will be maximum. So what will happen in the voltmeter and ammeter? It oscillates. The voltmeter is also oscillates and the ammeter also oscillates because it's both are rotating. So it's, whenever it crosses, whenever the rotating magnetic field crosses the rotor. It or cross this will happen, this thing will happen. Okay, automatically what will happen? So that the voltmeter will oscillate to maximum to minimum value and ammeter also oscillates to maximum to minimum value. When it crosses the when it crosses the direct axis, when the rotating magnetic field crosses the which thing direct axis, the voltage will be maximum and current will be minimum. Similarly, when it crosses the direct axis, the quadrature axis, the current will be maximum, voltage will be minimum. The thing is that we have to find maximum voltage, minimum voltage, and maximum current, minimum current. Both the things we have to note down. That is maximum voltage because it will oscillate. That the, the voltmeter will oscillate. We have to measure the voltmeter maximum value, minimum value. Here also maximum value, minimum value. Here we we have to note down the maximum value and minimum value. Here also we have to find the maximum value, minimum value. Then we have to apply the XD. When formula XD equal to maximum voltage per phase because here we are measuring line voltage. We have to convert it to phase voltage since it is star connected divided by root 3. So maximum voltage per phase divided by minimum current per phase because when XD is offered, the voltage will be maximum, current will be minimum. So XD equal to maximum voltage per phase divided by minimum current per phase. Similarly, XQ equal to minimum current per phase divided by maximum voltage per phase. Okay, voltage per phase. This is the formula applied. We have to apply formula and we have to find the value of XD and XQ. So the slip test used to find XD, XQ in salient pole sinker transmission. If you go for non-salient pole sinker transmission, there will be no two X won't be there, only one X. And the unit is one ohms. Okay, only back here there are two reactances are there. One is direct axis reactance, other one is quadrature axis reactance. Okay. So this is the slip test. Okay.